Hi, everybody. There's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I would like to talk a bit about being and non-being. And as a very practical matter, so, um, uh, you know, the caveat I always put out here is like, nothing I say is dogma. Nothing I say is, is true for you unless it's true for you. And uh, what I'm approaching it from is not from a, um, uh, a metaphysical standpoint, but more a practical standpoint. That is, as a martial artist, does how is thinking about it in this way, how does that affect my Kung Fu? How does it affect my ability to, to create Jin? And so it's, uh, you know, the language that I'm using here that is being and non-being is um, the, it's been beaten to death for millennia. You know, you know the uh, people have been talking about it forever. And I don't really want to engage that conversation. And a lot of times the words, the same words that I'll be using have been used by philosophers over the ages. And they kind of stake their claim on that. They plant their flag on a particular way of thinking a particular way of putting things in a uh, 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 as a comparison, so that they uh, you know they make their mark that way, and that establishes a particular line of philosophical thinking. And I could spin my wheels for the whole hour here and really not create much light on on that subject because it's it's so vast. But what I can do is I can take that same language and and put it in a way that I think is useful. It's useful for me and perhaps it is for you. So uh, it's, none of this is dogma. None of this is, uh, is holy scripture. It's all just Rick Barrett talking and, and it works for me. And if it's useful for you, then you get to use it. And uh, so that's, uh, that's the fun thing. So, uh, just to understand what we're talking about here, being and non-being, you know, I uh, the, the thought that kept coming to me today was, you know, to be or not to be, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take up arms and uh, by opposing end them, right? So this is the most famous soliloquy in the world. It's uh, the melancholy prince, Hamlet. We have him. He's thinking about, okay, should I do myself in or not? Should I be or not be at this point? Because life really sucks for me right now as this Prince of Denmark. And, uh, and things get a lot quieter. Maybe things get a lot quieter if I just take this bare bodkin, this knife, and, and commit holy seppuku on that. And, 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 and end this whole thing, or maybe not, you know, then the, his mind says, hey, I don't know what happens after that, you know, uh, what, what, go, what goes on after that, you know, I don't know. So anyway, he says like, and by thinking about this, says, you know, conscience uh, makes cowards of us all. And uh, so he, you know, by thinking about it, he kind of waffles on the old idea of, of doing himself in and he goes. But the concept that uh, we, we get out of this, this idea of being is the one that way I'm, I'm thinking about it, which is uh, being is a subjective reality as a form. That is what it feels like to be me or you or anyone else. There is a subjective reality. So that is, we get being is different than existence in that existence is just as something is there and we do not know let's say i have this cup here right this lovely cup and i have no idea what the subjective reality of this cup is if it even has one um my inclination is it probably doesn't but uh, at the same time i can i can address it as though it does so i know that this thing exists i'm pretty sure of it because i can perceive it and i'm you know, I'm drinking tea from it, so uh, I, I'm pretty confident that, that there is some existence happening there. 
how much being it has, completely um, uh, un unknowable question. But we humans, we can talk to each other. And so we can get a an idea of how much you are willing to embrace your form. That is, I get this form here, this, this form, I call it Rick Barrett, because that's a really cool thing for me to call it. And it's this form to the degree that I am occupying it and saying, I'm putting this, I'm embracing this form, I am being, and I have a subjective reality of this existence that allows me to go from mere existence into being. So if we could look at it, you know, think of it as, as substantial and insubstantial. That is, existence is the substantiality end of the scale. That is, how much, how dense is it? How much does it occupy? Space is in an extension. And so we say, okay, that's, that's the substantiality. That is, how much does that exist as well? It's pretty easy. Does it exist or not? You know, we're kind of... We say, yeah, that cup, I'm pretty sure it exists now, even though it's not on the camera. Um, Bigfoot, maybe, maybe not. You know, we get this idea, how much did we, we uh, are we confident that something exists? That's the that's thing. But that's a different question than how much being is there. What I'm saying is that the question is not, as Hamlet says, a binary question that is to be not to be it's question is how much being and how much non-being in a given form at a given time and that is if i put myself in a position i'm creating let's say i do a word off posture and i say ah oh, okay boom there's how much am i willing to invest in creating this form it's a form. It's it's I think this is Rick doing ward off. Great. This is Rick raising his right hand. Okay. That is how much am I willing to do that? And the where it really applies to us as martial artists is we can't just mail it in. We have to invest a piece of our soul in everything we do. And that is, there's, we get paid back. The, the, the investment returns to us a thousand fold, but we have to make that commitment to actually do it, to actually occupy space and time and in a form. And what we call, you know, we call that, that process to occupy space and time as a form, we call it presence. That is, I am present. I'm willing to be here now. So we got two things. We got here, we got now. And those two things are what makes presence. And my ability to be present as a form is directly related to how much power I can generate as a martial artist. If I'm mailing it in, that is, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm off somewhere else in my thoughts. I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing this weekend or, you know, the uh, what bills I got to pay or whatever. I'm not fully committed to being. And a lot of people want to learn their Tai Chi and whatever, whatever form. They want to learn it and memorize it so they don't have to think about it. So they they can just go and they just kind of disappear into the into the ether as they as they go through that form. And. I would like to encourage you to do the opposite. I would like to encourage you to really commit all your might and main to making this thing as real and solid and, and, and actual as, as you can. And so that is, as we do that, we're moving more and more in, this, in, the, in the direction of being. Non-being, is when we dissolve that form or any form. So here, it, I'm, the form I'm doing here is, is Rick is raising his right hand. And 
there is a creation here. I'm creating this thing. There's a uh, there is there's being is happening there with that. And now it's like, okay, I'm letting go of that. Poof. I'm uncreating that form. That is, I am I am it is in a state of non-being now. And this is something you, you find throughout the the Taoist literature, particularly the Tao Te Ching. We talk about, you know, the this dance between being and non-being and how that um uh, how we have to learn to to control that, you know, we can observe it. We can watch and say, oh, yes, yes. The, the seasons, they come, the seasons, they go, you know, the rain, it came, it went. And we can do it. We can take an external view and, and it is just an object. So it, there's a, an existence there. But if we, unless we invest some of our intention our mind, our being into that form, whatever it may be, it's just a um, passing phenomenon. It's something we can observe, but it, and just observing can bring you a certain amount of peace, I think. But if we go beyond that and say, I, I want to not only be peaceful, but I also want to be effective. So being able to go be to dance between the, the being and non-being allows you to regulate how much you are committed to making something happen. So there is an element of choice here. That is, you have to will it into being. Your ability to, you know, uh, you know, Yang Fu Kui, my uh, my teacher, he talks about a. Uh, he says, "Yeah, so will is one of the four essential qualities of 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 any martial artist. That is the ability to say, I'm going to make something happen. There's a you know an intention there that that you're doing, and how much am I intending to make this happen is a key part of the uh, uh, of the operation. Now the paradoxical thing that happens that the more you commit to this being to being a form the more you get into it so much so that that you're moving from the substantial which is existence into the insubstantial which is being that is subjectivity the farther you go into that the less and less you are actually thinking about me you know, you're thinking of, you're you're just you are inside of that form that you are creating. So you're 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 inside it, and oh, there's you're fully occupied with the operations that are required to make that happen. So then that's where the fun begins, and then as you move back more toward existence more towards substantiality, then you think about it and you're able to tell a story about it. You're able to, to make notes about what's effective, what's not effective, et cetera. And all this is particularly important when we're talking about things like, like today we're gonna to be playing with the, uh, the grass dragon energy and how effective you are at really reaping the benefits of the grass dragon are um, directly correlated to how much being, how much you are willing to be that energy, that, that, that dragon energy. And, you know, there's an essence to it that, that a feeling of dragonness that allows you to draw forth from wherever from nature and allows you to create this alchemy within your body mind so that you're you're different than you were before you did it but again it's 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 a it's a scale it's a spectrum it's not this binary choice that that hamlet gave us to be or not to be it's like no how much being 
how much am I willing to commit to that? How much am I willing to dive into there? How much, you know, am I, how self-conscious am I about actually being a dragon? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is kind of cool. Or, or it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. So whenever we get that, then we can, we can absorb this dragon chi and it works its magic within us. So before we actually get on and do this, I'd like to see if anybody has any questions, thoughts, disagreements. Uh, Valerie. So um, I know you've talked about, and I'm going to use my words here, fake it till you make it. So um, sometimes when I'm not so sure that I'm actually completely present, okay, but that's not really what my mind is. It's like I'm actually wondering how much am I grasping that dragon feeling um, and whether or not it's a good thing. I see the look on your face. You know, I, I, I've seen you do it in person and I've seen you on video with that, that dragon quality and I draw on that. Um, and I know that that helps me uh, to enhance my experience. Is that okay? Uh, better than okay. Okay. That's, uh, that's how there's so much information that cannot be passed on in words that um and you know we we call it direct transmission whenever we we have we were oh we we, we grok what's going on you know by by being able to pattern ourselves with that with you know oh th that's how that's done oh, okay i got it now because otherwise the mind is going to be doing its editor function the whole time and it's going to be standing there saying no no that's not right no that's not right you know, and, uh, and it's going to be critiquing, you know, your every movement whenever it's like it, you and that critiquing is what prevents you from actually getting into it. So, as you said, fake it till you make it. And we're using our imagination here. This is this is the source of of our our internal power is the imagination. It's like, you know, oh, well, in, is, is chi is that imaginary or real? It's like, well, yeah <laughs> both you know it's it's if you don't have imagination you're not going to feel it and uh, because it is beyond so every time we open the eye of spirit and we move in that direction we are when we we're talking about awareness that goes beyond the five senses and the rational mind so the rational mind wants to get in there and keep churning up things and you know, taking things apart. And the eye of spirit is going to say, no, no, we're going way beyond, way beyond anything that I've known before. We have to explore this, what else is possible at that point. And that's where we start to create a new reality. So being a dragon is something that, you know, I got to say, uh, you know, was fairly new to me. And so being able to to have a tail, you know, is fairly new to me, you know. So getting that, uh, and, but I'm reaping the benefits of of doing it that way. So let's, you know, so yeah, let's, let's go in. I'm using my imagination to say, yes, I've got a very long tail here. And I'm moving that tail, reaching with the tail, and what that does is it connects up to my coccyx, it connects up to my sacrum, my spine, and then, then it moves my whole body. So that's a long answer to your question, which is yes. <laughs> um, anybody else? Richard. Um, <clears throat> so we're sort of equating being to a commitment to presence. Um, I, you could say presence is a way of of saying how much being is is present. Yeah, that, that's sort of what I'm what I'm thinking is that um, 
I, I think for myself that it's as much as I try, it's rare that I am totally present to one thing. Um, so presence for me is sort of a, it's always on a continuum. Uh, it, all. it would be nice to be able to fully commit my presence to a particular thing. And right. like we're talking now, the amount of how how much of my being is going to be present in the dragon. Right. Um, so it's yeah, I, I don't have <laughs> I don't no, have I mean, anything I don't have anything else to say about it. I'm just I'm, I have a lot of thoughts about the continuum of presence and uh trying and, to increase that all the time, you know. Uh and and, and that's good afterward. You know, that that's that's the, the editor function. It's it's trying to sort things out as you're going along. It's like, no, no. You know, it's like playing a musical instrument. You know, if you're thinking about, you know, am I doing this correctly? You're probably not. You know, it's it's a uh, it's what you play and and you know you practice so that you you can just let it go and there's no uh, there's no uh, no holding back there. Same thing with your dragon. You want to feel into that and doesn't matter whether it's correct or not. It doesn't matter if, if you know, how, how well you're doing it. What matters is, you know, how deeply you are, are investing in being that. Because all these exercises are really practicing, practice in being and non-being. That is creating form, letting them go. Creating another form, letting it go. And to be able to, to, to do that and, the better we get at it, the more we can instantaneously assume a form. And our Kung Fu helps us to pick the right one. Anybody else? Okay, let's uh, let's do some dragon, okay? Um, cool, why don't you stand up? Do you want me to start zooming in? Um, I will leave that to you. Okay. You're you're the producer. Okay, so uh, let's see more feet. I think. How do we? There we go. Good. Okay, so I can come a little closer. There we go. All right. So let's. Uh, first, we're going to just really commit to the dragon energy, and we're going to uh, we're going to do that by. Uh, well, let's, first of all, let's let's get our three pillars in. Our begin with our central equilibrium. We covered that last week, and the idea here is you're starting off. You're feeling the balls of your feet. Your knees are unlocked, and you're sinking down, down into your stance there. And uh, and for us dragons, let's let's take it a little wider than usual. Okay, you want to want a little wider than than a hip width stance. So you're you're this this dragon, this uh, grass dragon, is a very low kind of crocodile, alligator type of creature. Very low, sporty, close to the ground kind of kind of thing. So you want to feel that that and feel the balls of your feet. So what this does is it creates a young energy. You're really committing to that. It's like you're. You're on on your balls. You're the you know you're getting ready for uh, you know it's like playing a sport or something like that. You're on a diving board. And you're you're getting ready to dive in. You're you're um, active and anticipatory. And then reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, and open the jade pillow gate. Breathe deeply into your, you know, with your diaphragm deep into your, into your dantian, your lower abdomen. And you're opening the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. That is that, you know, you're lengthening your neck and, and creating space there. Feel into that. Relax your lower back. Let your hips 
sink Feel yourself sinking down into your feet still into the balls of your feet and you want to turn you want to spiral down into your left leg and then into your right leg and turn just so, so loosen up your hip joints point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence reach out a little bit with your elbows so the arms are rounded so we're unkinking the hose here particularly at the at the hip joints the quad the elbows, reaching with the elbows, opens up the shoulder joints. So we're creating that. Opening the jade pillow gate, unkinks the hose in the neck so that there's a energy flow that is connecting your head with your torso. Your qua connects your legs with your torso. So we're getting these channels open and you can feel it in your hands. You can feel them filling up just by standing here. Point your index fingers and feel that the energetic coherence. That is, you're tying the whole energy field together. You're linking everything up. And we're gonna add some dragon energy here. So the your hands are rounded. You can take your hand and put it on your head and that gives you the shape that you want there. It's a rounded shape and the fingers are spread. Not tense, but just spread. And feel your fingernails as though they were dragon claws. We've got a lot of new people here, so I'm, uh, I like to, uh, you know, introduce this stuff, you know, and, and please feel free to ask questions. You can you can send that in in your replies to the to the video if you're watching this on YouTube. But uh, you want to feel those those fingernails as though they're claws, and this is going to activate your connective tissue system, and it creates a very profound wood chi. That is, it's it um, it's kind of this expansive energy. You can feel the expansiveness in your body and then go into your heels now and ah, feel the energy going in a yin direction. That is, instead of up and out, yang, we're going now, we're going down and in. So feel it into your heels. So that the energy is still quite full, but it's moving in a different direction. Now go back to the balls of your feet and up and out. Feel that energy rising and expanding, opening. Now go into your heels and sink and yin, down and in. Feel into your hands and notice that they're quite full. There's tingling, pulsing, maybe heat. There's a lot going on there. We got you got these dragon claws here that you're uh, that you're working with, and it's circulating the energy throughout the whole the whole body mind. So now go into the balls of your feet and reach with your wrists, very slowly coming up. Your fingers are dangling; they're just hanging there. You're reaching with the wrists as you're coming up and now reach with the fingers open and you're grasping with those claws and reach reach out open from the spine to your shoulder blades from the shoulder blades into the shoulders into the elbows the wrists into the fingers into the fingernails Feel that expansion there. This is very young, what we're doing here. So now we're going into the heels and ah, yin. Elbows come down and your fingers come up. You bend at the wrist, your fingers come up, your hands come down, sinking, sinking. Ah, yin. And feel the direction going down, down, down into the earth. 
So we're plugging into the big chi now. We're getting the yang chi of the heavens, the yin chi of the earth. And it's moving through your body mind. The yin chi is rising up, going out the top of your head. The yang chi is, is descending, coming from the heavens down through the top of your head, down through your feet and into the earth. And now feel the balls of your feet, feel the wrists, fingers are hanging, and the wrists reach open. Reach, feel that extension. Really feel your back opening up, your shoulder blades opening up, your elbows reaching, your wrists reaching, your fingers reaching. Now we're going to add the tail into this. So to be a proper dragon, we want to have a nice long tail. So you're reaching from your coccyx, your tailbone, and you are got this nice long tail. And I like to have like about a 15 footer myself, just reaching out behind. And you're just, as you turn your body to the left, your tail is gonna reach to the right. And you're kind of reaching forward with your right hand. Your tail is reaching over there. And now your tail is gonna to reach to the left. And now reach forward with your left hand. Now reach with the right hand. Wag your tail to the, to the right. Left hand. Reach your tail to the left. You're connecting up the whole system. Your tail connects to the coccyx, but also goes up your spine. And then go back to the center and just hold that. And just feel that. And notice what else I'm doing is I'm, as I'm reaching my right hand forward, reaching my tail to the right, my head is, is reaching to the left. And my right arm comes up a bit and then I uh, reach my tail to the left and my head goes to the right and reach out. Wag your tail to the right and to the left. And then back to center. And now uh, sink into your heels, reach down with your elbows, bend the wrists, and feel the yin sinking into uh, sinking into the yin. Feel yourself opening deeper, deeper into the earth. You're creating this vast reservoir of yin chi that you have access to. It gives the yang chi a place to go. Feel into your hands. Just notice how much how much activity is going on there. The hands are your best barometer of that whole body energetic connection. If you're feeling a lot of activity in your hands, a lot of blood flow, a lot of pulsing, that's an, a good indicator that the whole body is connecting up energetically. And you've also cranked up the volume So now the dragon, when we step, just watch me as I do this, come up here. I'm going to be stepping with my right foot. The, the foot is, we call it a, um, a rooster step. This is from Xinyi. So the foot is kind of parallel with the ground as I come up here. 
and then I step down a heavy step, which is a bare step. And as I do that, I'm coming across my left hand here, wagging my tail to the left, hands coming across. And then I'm going to come up and have rooster and then bear. And so the right hand comes across the tail wags to the right. Okay, so that's the that's the pattern we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna follow here. And uh, sometimes I'll have people behind me and follow along, but I really want you to see my hands and and also my face as you do this because it's really important that you commit to the process. That's where we get back into the being idea here. So let's. So get your center of equilibrium, go to the balls of your feet, and arms come up, reaching, opening. Now, just to connect up here, imagine you're turning a couple of knobs with your hands, and really just feel the fingertips, feel the very deliberately, you're using your imagination and really committing to feel those fingernails, feel your tail. So now we're gonna step with the left foot and come down, bare step, and sink into that left leg and turn, wag your tail to the right, reaching with the right hand opening, really feeling the reaching from the back through the shoulder blades, through the shoulder, the elbow, the wrists, the fingers. And then come in the right foot and then step, bear. Mm. And wag your tail to the left. Really sinking into that, into that right leg. Step, so there's, you're really, there's a, 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 a strong focus there. The spirit comes through the eyes, the Shen comes through the eyes, and you want to really have that focus. You're a, you're a dragon, you're that kind of like that crocodile, alligator kind of directed focus. So now raise your left hand. So here you're, the dragon is holding the pearl. And dragons are always depicted in Chinese literature and art as, as holding a pearl. And the, so that's reaching up there. That's the yang, it's reaching up there. The yin is you're circling with your right hand. So the idea is you're circling around and you've got this big spiral. You're only going to go around once, but the spiral is going to be continuing. So this is where the imagination comes in again. You're really investing in this infinite spiral that you're generating there, but you're just going around there once and feel into that. Feel that yang, feel that yin, and then come up. Go to your heels and uh, sink. So we're doing an abbreviated form due to space considerations. But now we're going to go and we're going to do it on the left, the other side. So this, forward, this time we step forward, we're reaching with the right hand. Now we're going to reach with the left hand. So feel the balls of your feet, 
really everything you're doing here is a, is a full commitment. You you feel your wrists. You're reaching with them. Re feel your fingers. You're opening, reaching with that. Now we're going to be stepping with the right foot, reaching with the left hand. So it's so you feel that rooster, bear, left hand, wag your tail to the left, rooster, bear, wag your tail to the right. You're reaching out, opening, feel that expansion, that extension. Rooster, bear. Feel that, that extension. And right hand comes up, holding the pearl. Really feel into that. Yeah. Circle the left hand. Feel that infinite spiral going down, down, down. That yang reaching up, sinking into that right leg. Step in. Sink into your heels. Hands come down. Feel the yin. Your right heel sink into that. Step in with your left foot. Now feel both heels in the balls of both feet. Yang. Arms come up. Deep breath. Yang, yang, yang. Inhale. Gather. And then heels and yin, yin, yin. Exhale. And throw the chi away. This is that being and non-being. So we're dissolving forms. We're dissolving the energy. We're, dissol we're dissolving our dragon. The dragon is gone now. Please have a seat. So that was, uh, you know, for people who are just tuning in for the first time, that wasn't the whole form. It was, uh, I took out a couple of parts there so that we could, could really feel into it and uh, just isolate into the, the energies that, that make that happen. Uh, there's more that we can explore, but the, uh, you know, for time and space, didn't allow for it right now, but allowed us to, to get a taste of what that feels like to, to really invest in that beingness. So uh, uh, anybody, uh, thoughts, questions? Karen? I just have a technical question. Um, it seemed as though we were uh, bringing your arm, were you stopping just in, before your midline or were you bringing it to your midline? I think midline is a good place to, to do it. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how it, uh, yeah, you want to bring it, the midline, uh, lining up with your midline is always a good idea. So, uh, 
So it, uh, I think I would say that I, I don't know how it appeared on on the camera. Well, crossing it is not a good idea, right? Yeah, you don't want to cross the midline, right? But bring it there, Just so right there. get up okay. to that, or right straight in front of the shoulder is also good. So uh, you know, let me see. How does that look here? So I'm coming up here, boom, boom uh -huh. like this. So. This feels actually more like in front of the shoulder because the midline would be over here mm -hmm. and I want to be more like like this. So so in this case I'd say I'd say don't cross the, the midline, but probably in front of the shoulder is the uh, a good stopping point for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Everybody else? Valerie. I love the dragon. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> it's a nice dragon. <laughs> and grasping the movements that we have learned, not just tonight, but before, it took me a while. And I'm kind of realized because I was divided in my attention. And so it took me a, a bit of time, but, uh, Man, when I get into it, even my hands, which I've felt a lot of stuff in my hands, it, it's different. It's markedly different, and it's really hard to put in words. I think I said something like it's like an empty brick. <laughs> they're not heavy. They're, they're up. But like I said, they're just I don't have words to really describe the difference. And it really surprises me. I've been doing a lot of this stuff for a long time. And to have something that feels so physically different due to the focus is, um, it, I like it. I like it. And I like the dragon. Yay. <laughs> and the dragon likes you. Yes. <laughs> Richard. Um. <clears throat> I, I found myself resting on my tail a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> and I said, I said, no, get up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Scott, you had something. A uh, question and a comment. Um, yeah, kind of what Valerie was saying that, um, Particularly that, you know, I've done this quite a few times. I, as a matter of fact, I do this for him every morning um, since you taught it to us a couple months ago. Um, but it particularly, you know, just the, the focus tonight, the energy feels very different. Mm -hmm. You know, but like what Valerie said, the sort of the empty brick kind of, that's kind of the feeling, but that's, it's, yeah, it's hard to, there's, there's not really the words. Good. But, yeah, I, I, me too, and I, I, I think it has to do with how much being you're investing into, into that form, it's that that real commitment. Instead of you know, particularly whenever you're just learning it, it's like you know, uh, am I getting this right? You know, and then uh, you know, but once you start to really trust it, and you just you're you're committed to being a dragon then it uh, uh, it's transformative. You really, you know, it gets it gets big, big chi. Well, normally I do it in the morning, first thing in the morning, and it's, you know, I don't drink coffee, but for me, it's like a cup of coffee. It wakes me right, right up. Um, but this time, but tonight, it didn't wake me up so much as fill me. Good, good. That's a, that's actually good because it's a uh, you know the energy is water and earth you know so there's it does have a, a yin quality to it even though there's that that wood expansion to the grass there so it's like that wood expansion so it's a nice a nice combo it's a nice cocktail of uh, that uh, uh, you know takes takes you to someplace new so my my question. Um sort of technical question, 
when you're swirling your arm, are you are you are you is your weight staying where it is? The is your weight staying in the front leg the whole time? Or are you shifting back at all? Um, I'd say shifting back. I didn't, didn't make it clear. Let me show you. So there's a uh, there's actually a little trick to this. I didn't want to get too uh, involved in, but the uh, the idea is that let's say I'm I'm here. I'm going to as I'm moving back. I'm going to my my rear leg, but my torso is still facing forward. So what I'm not doing is 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 this. I'm I'm not turning like this, right? So the whole body is not turning. I'm I'm going and sinking to the back, sinking into the quad, and then circling. So you're in the back leg and then back into the front. So like this, right? So the, the body doesn't doesn't turn all the way around and you're like that. So uh, uh, that that keeps you allows you to keep the uh, the energy contained. Hope that is that, that clear? Yeah, I mean, that, you know, you taught it that way. I think it was just tonight that you were kind of simplifying it, you know. But when we first learned it, we were we learned it more that way. So that's why I was slightly confused. Well, yeah, I yeah. Every time it's a, a question of what what do I put in, what do I take out, and uh, you know, try not to overburden with too much verbiage. So yes, I uh, I have gotten a. Uh, comments uh some people are saying that that this q a at the at the end is their far, their favorite part of the whole the whole show so <laughs> i want, want to acknowledge you for your your authentic and insightful questions responses uh observations uh you know and uh and and people are, are enjoying that you know the uh, the people that are tuning in they're enjoying that because you are the uh, you are the voice of the people, you know you <laughs> you are asking the questions that that you know people would ask. Hey, you know, what about this thing here? And so I appreciate your input and your and and other people do as well. So thank you, Richard. Um, I just wanted to say I've been noticing that. Uh, that attaching the tail has um, seemed to uh, help me fill my the rest of my body more completely. Fabulous, fabulous, good, good. And that was fill rather than feel, right? Yeah, fill. So energetically full. Yeah, good. Me too. Me, <laughs> it because uh, it it really. Uh, I mean, we talked about it in other other. Uh, you know, uh, uh, episodes of this that, uh, you know, we're, there's a, what's called a chi vortex there with your, with your governing vessel, your conception vessel, and the penetrating vessel, which are all activated by this, this tail action. And it really cranks up the chi to, to 11. And uh, so, um, yeah, it, I, I feel it too. Cool. Well, thank you all so much. It's been great. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, you. Thanks, Maria. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank Love you, Maria. Maria. Tra travel well, everyone who's traveling. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night.